Hello everyone. Welcome back to Resource Geography. Land use, especially the agricultural land use, is one of the prime factors that determine the economy of our society. And hence, the analysis of the land use pattern has one of the long been concern of geographers. In the beginning, it was felt that the agricultural land use is little affected by relative location once the factor of a suitable market has been found. Later on, it was proved that the farmer does adapt his land use not only on the basis of this market, but also it is affected by physical, climate, landform and soils. And the most famous theory for determining the land use of a region is that of the agricultural location theory of von Thunen. Johann Heinrich von Thunen presented thus a model to the world to explain the agricultural location of a region and the reason for such agricultural activities. Thunen lived in Germany from 1783 to 1850 and his theory was partially based on the work of the economist Adam Smith and partially based on his experience of running his own farm estate at Mecklenburg. He attempted thus to construct a theoretical model of land use pattern, giving a particular arrangement of towns and village in a situation experienced in then Europe. Now, let's look into what was the main aim behind Thunen to propose this theory. The main aim of von Thunen was to show how and why the agricultural land use varies with distance from the market. And the main principle behind this theory is that of economic rent, where the different types of land use produce different net returns. Now let's look into the assumptions made by Wontonen. There is an isolate estate with one city at the center of an agricultural area and this city has no link with the rest of the world. City is the sole market for the surplus of the production from the agricultural area and the agriculture area is the sole supplier to the city. This isolate estate has no counter magnets in its vicinity. The isolate estate is a uniform plane over which there is no variation in soil, fertility, climate or any physical factors. Thus, the agriculture plane is homogeneous in character. There are no physical barriers to move across the plane. There is only one mode of transportation, that is the horse cart in those days. Thus, the transportation cost is same everywhere, in all directions. The market price in the city was fixed. All the farmers receive same price for a particular crop at any one time. The hinterland is inhabited by farmers who always wish to maximize their profit. Thus, there is an open competition exist among the farmers. And these farmers have the full knowledge of their needs of the market. The transportation cost is directly proportional to the distance from the market. Thunen has explained the theory on the basis of two models. The model number one is the intensity model and the second model is the crop model. As per the intensity model, the intensity of the production of a particular crop declines with the distance from the market. That is, the intensity of a production is a measure of the amount of input per unit area of land. 
For example, if we apply greater amount of money, labor and fertilizers, then greater the intensity of the agriculture production. Thus, this, if a same crop with same market price is located close to the city, has intense cultivation than the crop growing far away from it because the locational rent will be higher for the crop one as it grows near to the market. If the market price is same, then the locational rent will be determined by the transportation cost. The transportation cost will be comparatively less for the produce of farms near the city. Hence, they will have higher locational rent. In the crop model, the type of land use will always vary with the distance from the market. The second model thus examines the location of several crops in relation to market. These locations are generally determined by specific market price, transportation cost, basic cost of production and specific yield per unit of land. Thus, every product will have a different locational rent and hence the land use will vary. Let us study this case with two important cases. In the case of case A, there are two crops A and B with the same production cost and yield but it has different market price and transportation cost. If A has more transportation cost and higher market price, then the crop A will always occupy the location near to the market. The locational rent of crop A decreases rapidly than crop B due to higher transportation cost. Also, the market price of crop A will be higher than that of crop B. Thus, the crop A with the highest locational rent for the unit of land will always be grown near to the market since it gives the greatest return and all farmers will attempt to maximize their profit by growing it near to the market. Now consider the case B. There are two crops C and D with the same production cost and transportation cost but here they have different market price and different yield. If the crop C has more yield but lower market price than crop D, then crop C will occupy location near to the market as higher yield will always demand more transportation and more transportation cost. Higher yield of crop C will overcome the lower market price so that the crop revenue of C will be greater than the revenue what we get from crop D. Since the production cost is same for both the crops, higher revenue for the crop C will create higher locational rent at the market. Now let's look into Tunan's land use model. Based on all the above such assumptions and principle, Tunan has constructed a land use model having six major concentric zones around a city. The first zone is the zone of market gardening and dairy production. This is the zone where the production of fresh milk and vegetables will try to concentrate since these type of products are perishable in nature. The city always requires continuous supply of vegetables and milk with a speedy transportation before it gets spoiled. This will prompt the farmers to carry out market gardening and dairying close to the market so as to reduce the transportation cost and spoilage to earn higher profit and economic rent. In this zone, the fertility of land will always be maintained 
as there will be continuous manoeuvring to reduce the impact of intensive farming done by the farmers the son too is the son of lumbering and wood production thus this is the source of fuel in those days the demand over the wood is bulky in nature and hence it requires higher transportation cost this will demand the firewood yield at higher occasional rent and hence a forest belt will be concentrating in the second zone as will it will reduce the transportation cost and thereby increases the profit beyond the forest belt three zones exist where rye was the important market product here the crops are generally such type of grains that will be grown which can be stored for a long time hence it reduces the number of trips to the market by the farmer the only difference between these three zones is that the intensity of production varies as the distance from the market increases the intensity of production decreases the zone 3 is the crop farming without any fallow land and pasture land this zone is generally having intensive arable zone with a six field rotation of crops here rye is the dominant crop no land is left to fallow in this zone during any time of the year zone 4 is the crop farming area with some fallow land here less intensive farming is done compared to zone 3 a seven field crop rotation system is followed one year for rye one for barley one for oats and the other three for the pasture lands and one will be kept as fallow land the products are sent to the market especially like rye butter cheese and occasionally some live animals the zone 5 is a three field system this zone is the most distant zone that produces the grains or rye this zone will follow a three field system where one by third land is kept for the production of rye or grains one by third as pasture lands and the remaining will be kept as fallow land The zone six is the farthest zone, and this zone is generally where the grains are not commercially product produced due to greater distance from the market. It is only produced for the farmers' own consumption. The major part of this zone is kept as pasture lands to feed the cap cattle. Only animals. and animal products are marketed from this zone there is only less transportation cost incurred in this zone as the live animals would be driven on foot to the market now let's look into the critical analysis of von thunen's theory there have been many attempts by the geographer to test the von thunen's model with his assumptions in real world situation and then they have raised the following points regarding this theory the first one is the condition of an isolate set with one city at the center and such a situation can be hardly found anywhere in the world where such an isolate estate is existing without no link with the rest of the world assumption of homogeneous physical environment stated by tunen cannot be observed over larger areas they are rarely found over locations with a smaller area coverage thus we know that most of the areas of our earth are heterogeneous in character so such an assumption has been criticized the crop yield also varies from year to year depending on the change of weather condition 
However, in Tunen's model, it has been stated that the yield of the crop rarely varies. This is not observed anywhere in the world because of changing climatic and physical conditions. The price fluctuations in the market cannot be ruled out in any economy, whereas in the theory, the market price remains same. The Tunen's measure of economic rent and intensity are difficult to test because it is highly complex in nature. The measurement of number of days and man worked in a year, the cost of labor per hectare, the cost of total inputs per hectare, these are not uniform in intensive and extensive types of farming. There happens a revolution in the transportation in early 19th century and this has been totally ignored by Thunan as he maintained that the horse cart was the only form of transportation in those days. Due to the revolution, there is an increase in the transportation cost with increasing distance. That has also been ruled out under the Thunan's model as we know very well that the waterways and the roadways with increasing distance will reduce the transportation cost. Hence, it has also been challenged. Tunan himself has admitted that with the change in the location of transportation or market sector, the pattern of land use will also change. Hence, the Tunan has later on introduced some changes in his initial assumption of the model. And then he has examined such as changes affected in the shape of already proposed model. In the initial model, he only assumed that there was only one cart or the horse as the form of transportation. Later on, Tunan has added a river through the middle of the agriculture plain to reduce the transportation cost and the commodities to be carried out to a larger distance. And thus, the zones that were circular in the earlier model became elongated. The zone of forestry, which was earlier close to the city, was highly elongated and situated from the upstream to downstream in the later on model. Tunen has removed the assumption of only one market center and now he has introduced a new satellite center near to the boundary of the estate and this has elongated the model away from the primary center. The demands of the food grain would not be unlimited now as the zone of production became narrower. Thus, the entire estate which was earlier circular became more or less a conspicuous elongated in shape. Von Tunen's logical framework has been important in the evolution of our thinking of how the land values and the land use came about in a modern city. Indeed, Tunen's general theory of land values and the land use has still been considered as important in the evolution of geographical thought. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Post your queries and suggestions in the comment box. I wish every learner a great day ahead. Thank you all.